Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Danny Cruz, otherwise known as Pinch Tune. I've been a little slow posting lately. I'm sorry I've been busy, but I'm definitely back. My video from the other day went down really well, so thank you guys for that. I've had a lot of people ask me lately about my recent builds which are mostly DJI and it includes Impulse RC, Apex HD and then the Hyperlow RS Plus which I still fly a lot and that one is running Cadex Vista units. I decided to make a little video uh, to go into detail about the parts on this particular build which is my Impulse RC Apex that runs Flight 1. I haven't scripted this so let's see how it goes. There's a couple of things I'm going to let you know about it and things that I'm going to recommend and maybe to do differently because of experience. Uh, just watch, somebody's gonna thumb this video down because every time like I post a video and I'll get uh, everything thumbs up and then if I mention DJI, somebody comes out of the woodwork, oh, I hate DJI, I freaking thumbs it down, so just watch. But anyway, uh, so I had somebody ask me about this quad. This uh, is an Impulse RC Apex HD, which is made specifically to hold the large DJI Air, Air unit, the original. And it took me a while to get this flying very well. I changed a bunch of parts, but I'm very happy with it. And a lot of the parts that I fly on it are very proven. Can you come over here and take a look? So uh, when I mean by proven, I, I've been flying the iFlight Slick 50 amp ESCs, the SSX ESCs for about a year and a half now, I think, with my 2150 F40 Pro motors on 5S. And this setup has been working very well on my Hyperlow quads. I don't like it as much on the Apex for some reason. I prefer it on the Hyperlow. Uh, but I'm, I'm using a power distribution board there. It's just, just a, a PDB, which is by Matek. And it's very simple. They're hard to find now. There's a video about them. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, the one I have here is the simplest one that doesn't have a regulator. And those are not made anymore. I can't even find them. But there's other ones that you can find that do have regulators. And in there, I have a Flight 1 Revolt OSD Lite. I sometimes fly those, or I sometimes fly the uh, the smaller millivolt OSDs, but they work really well. And I still love having individual ESCs, but I know a lot of you guys prefer having a four-in-one. I'll tell you right now that I've been testing the the T-Motor Pacer in a hyperlow frame, and I'm very stoked with it. So I think I would definitely recommend that one. But anyway, going back to this guy, a couple of things you gotta note is. I go for lightweight, so the motors are light. I run 5S instead of 6S most of the time. If I can, I'll fly a Session 5 again because for freestyle, I feel it just feels a lot better. I don't use uh, hyper smooth, at least not for freestyle. If I do long range, I'll use it, but for freestyle, I like it like raw like it is. You know, I try to fly as smooth as possible, and that's normally how I do it. Very rarely will I put a Hero 7 on it, and if I do, usually hyper smooth is off. Um, and I run this setup of antennas, which I also have a video about, you'll find it here. And that video shows why I went with this setup, because it's lighter, basically. And I don't have to deal with 20 grams worth of SMAs. Uh, the battery is a um, Thunder Power Sugar Rush. But again, there's a lot of good ba batteries on the market. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything, so if you find a, a good battery with a low weight, and they're making batteries better and better, like I just saw something from, who was it, um, Gowning, GMB, and it was a 6S and super light, I think it was 125 grams. The point is that they're getting better, so keep an eye, keep an eye out for batteries because they keep improving. Not very fast as we wish they would, but they still get, keep getting better. Um, for the mount uh, for the GoPro, 
I have, I always like to have a TPU case because it holds my ND filters and I don't use a stick on kind simply because I've never had any of those. I just use the TBS ones that I buy from like Brain 3D and whatnot. And they just sit in there and just hold it together. And I'm using just a foam wedge with a strap around it. This strap is the one from Pyrodome that has a Kevlar in it. So it tends to not break. I like it for the GoPro because it just, the battery is held with two straps. But having the camera with just one strap, I like to have the extra security that it's not gonna snap in a crash. I'm using the foam and the foam is good because it's lightweight. Now there's a downside, of course. This is about 25 degrees, which is what I fly with the, any camera really, even with the DJI one. And you do get some props in view. So that's something to keep in mind. With a higher mount or maybe with a Hero 7, you can avoid having the props in view. It's just unfortunate. Sometimes what I do is I crop the video or I shoot in 4K or in 2.7 and I zoom in a little bit so I can crop out the, the props. These props are FX S4. It's what I've been flying lately on my 5S rigs. Then on my 6S stuff, I've been flying um, the 51466 Gemfan Hurricanes. And I still want to try the 51433s, which I think it'll be happy medium. The reason I fly these shallow ones here is because on 5S, I have a little bit less punch than on 6S. So the 51466, I think are a little bit steeper, even though they're light. So I prefer these ones on the 5S quads. Um, I think, oh, a couple other things I use. The stock hardware is uh, the steel hardware, but I, uh, I use aluminum 7075 where I can, for example, for the motors. I get these from Fasteners Express. And then up front, this mount, I've had so many people ask me about it. This is the one from Brain 3D. I'll put a link in the description again. This one comes with this set, the straight, and it comes with another set that's angled down that I use on racers sometimes. I do not have a file for it. Don't ask me for it. You have to get it from Brain 3D. I just buy it from them. Yes, I print, but this one, I buy it from, from them. And that's, uh, so that's how I mount the, uh, the antenna up front. And also some people ask me, why don't you have the antenna out back? I always feel the radio antenna, I prefer it at the front because first of all, at the back, it's together with the video antennas. And to me, that's not optimum, but it's, that's not the biggest reason. The biggest reason is simply when you're flying and you're high and you're flying around, right? If you're in this direction flying towards you and the antenna's at the back, guess what? Your antenna's not covered by the whole quad and the battery if you have it back here, which is where a lot of people put it, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference. But the point is that up here, if you can see, no matter where you're flying, the antenna is always within line of sight. Of course, unless you are doing a flip, but that's the rare instance. Normally, when you're flying back to you, straight line of sight with the antenna, flying away, straight line of sight with the antenna. I definitely prefer the front. And a lot of people are like, oh, you're gonna break it. Nah, they, it takes crashes just fine. These antennas are really hard to break. They take a beating, it's okay. I definitely prefer this method. and. I don't use the stock bumper that comes with this frame. So this is for me, the bumper, as you can see. Uh, a couple of notable things, let's see. Uh, this is how I run my battle lead. So I just plug straight like this over it. On some batteries, I blame this way and I feed the line over. I don't like my leads out at the back. This is very good, it doesn't get in the way. I just strap it down with a zip tie and it doesn't get into the props or anything. So that's all good. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Now, for my recommend recommendations, I used to recommend these motors in the past. They've been my favorite motor for a long time, but I'm starting finally to move away. Uh, and the reason is, even though it's a great motor and you can, f I don't know if you can still find it, they don't make it anymore. But uh, I found that the newest motors are smoother and more powerful and more efficient. Um, with DJI, you see everything. And when you're flying, that um, any little wiggle, any, any sort of imperfection in your tune, you can see it. And an analog, it, didn't, it doesn't really transfer to the GoPro enough because it's not enough, but an analog, it doesn't bother me because you can't really see it. But in, in DJI, it, I see it and it just bothers the heck out of me and it messes with my enjoyment of the actual flying. So I'm trying to go lately with smooth, as smooth as possible. If you check my recent video here of the Newbie Jones Smooth Motors, which by the way, they're on V2 now, those are V1s. They are smoother than these, nothing uh, against T-Motor because that's what, mainly what I fly. I also have the Pacers and I'm looking into the 
Pro 4 now, and I have some Pro 3s, but the Pro 3s are way smoother than these, and, this, and the Pro 4s, I haven't flown them yet, but I assume they are as well. So just check the latest recent stuff by T-Motor, like the 4s and the 3s, and then check out uh, the X-Nova stuff is awesome. The, the Pacers from T-Motor are great, and they're a great price, especially the ones that are, go around $20 that I have a review for as well. Just check my channel. And then the newbie drone stuff. I haven't flown the flows yet, but I will eventually. Uh, but I do like those move motors a lot. And I wouldn't recommend these with this quad because I, I have struggled a little bit tuning it. It's There's something with this frame and these motors that doesn't play as well as these motors on the hyperlows that I usually fly. It's just the way it is. Some frames tend to um, have resonant frequencies and different frequencies, and some motors work better with with a frame that doesn't necessarily work as well on a other frame but that you learn by experience so um my my impulsor c apex that has the smooth motors actually flies cleaner than this and then i intend to replace these motors and put something else on this and i think i'll make it a lot better hopefully this helps oh another thing i wanted to mention the uh the individual escs i still prefer it because i feel they fly cleaner because you don't have a big old honking ESC right there under the FC causing noise. But again, that's not always the case. Sometimes it's not a problem. Like that Pacer one that I've been testing, I should have a video coming up soon, so subscribe. Um, that's been super smooth. I, the t I tuned it within two batteries, not a single problem. So it really depends. Where the Hobby Wing ESCs, I've had sometimes a lot of problems tuning those, so you never know. Sorry, I'm talking really fast. Um, but anyway, the, the one real big downside that I don't like about my choice of individual ESCs is that if I have to replace motor, it's a lot more work. Where if you have a 4-in-1, you can just put race wire and just replace motors real quick. Where here, you have to cut the heat shrink and then desolder the motor, solder the new one on with the heat shrink on. And if you're really picky about me, you want it covered again, so you got to do a whole new heat shrink. You can't just let it expose, you know, sloppy, but that would be the easiest way to go. So keep that as a caveat if you decide to run individual ESCs like I do. Hopefully, you guys picked all that up because that was a lot. <laughs> um, oh. So hopefully that all helps, guys. Thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I'm super stoked. It's going really well. It's going really. It's going. It's going at a three times the rate it used to, and that's all thanks to you guys. I appreciate that. What am I missing? Nothing. I'll see you in the next one.